right now. Welcome back to Supremely Black Podcast. This is your co-host, D. Rose. We got just me and Jay Flizzy this week. Uh, Spears is away handling some personal business. But, uh, Flake, how your week been, man? Man, week been good, man. Look, I know folks be talking about why y'all always talking about comedy, just then love you ain't made it. Because, see, when they post on Instagram, you just show somebody who made it. Look, I'm just showing y'all when I do made it, I'm like, dang, I remember... He was only talking about these shows he had with 40 people in the crowd. Yeah. So celebrate my birthday this past week. You know what I mean? And it started off with straight comedy with the ATL, did three shows, came back to Nashville, did a birthday bash show. You know what I'm saying? And then I did a Don't Tell Comedy show, got humbled real quick. Don't Tell Comedy is huge, but that joint was outside. You know what I mean? So, hey, so the week been good, man. Wife and family celebrate my birthday real nice. They know I, I mess with Uncle Nears, so I got some Uncle Nears infused peach cobbler, Uncle Nears infused um, cupcakes, and a bottle of Uncle Nears. You know what I mean? So they they knew how to get get your boy right with that. Uh, but man, just blessed to see another year. You know what I'm saying? Blessed to be around family. Mother's Day, heard from Mama, talked to Mama, talked to my grandma. Luckily, she's still alive. It's a blessing to have somebody 90 years old. And we and when we went to go visit her, we, we did Mother's Day the week before because I had all them shows uh, the week after. But I'm going to post it. I'm going to say it to you. You might want to post it on here. But we had a good conversation um, about segregation, going through the all that. And they wouldn't even be bringing it up. This is my, t- my youngest daughter, my 10-year-old, saying, look, I want to know what was really going on. And and it's good to have the younger kids talking about that. I didn't even know my auntie had went through segregation. Uh, she's 65. So in Milan, when segregation was happening, she was one of the few students that tested it out first. Uh, so she gave her thoughts on that and what was going on. But it was just it just felt good to be down there and record that conversation with my grandmother and, you know, talking about how her and granddaddy met and you know, I didn't know she used to live in Pennsylvania and ended up in Tennessee. And my granddad used to live in Indianapolis, uh, Indiana, and ended up back in Tennessee and the work she did during that time. So, man, I just got to say, if you got your grandparents out there, if you just got one, ask them type of questions. Because I wasn't old enough for the other three grandparents I had to sit down and have them type of conversations. So, um, so man, it's, it, it's been a really blessed week. Really blessed week. It was dope, man. And, uh, Yes, you said a lot of key points, man. I think it's, you know, it's very important to be able to sit down and talk with them elders. So I'm glad that you was able to do that. I actually uh, talked to my grandmother, me and my sister was on the phone with her for about an hour. We was all on three-way. But I don't think if we, I don't think we've ever done that. But just the fact that, you know, it's Mother Day week. It's a little a little, a little difficult for me and my, my family. Uh, but we made the best out of it. But just to be able to hear their voice sometimes is just soothing enough. So it is a lot. But we definitely gonna have to right. dive into that that conversation that little fam started. But it's it's been a uh a hell of a week as well, man. My little sister, she didn't make it to state, but she did place in the sectionals. You know, when you're trying to get into state, you have to have a qualifying number, but she's still gonna be going into her senior year as one of the considered one of the top. Uh, runners in West Tennessee, which is which is why it's such a big deal for me is because this is actually her first year running. So for her to hop out and still be one of the top people in West Tennessee and competing with, you know, people from, you know, East, Middle and things like that in her first year, you know, the sky's the limit. So, you know, she's already hit me up and talk about she's ready to really train this summer and get better. And she she got that, got that it. She want to compete, but I, I think that's dope. So, uh, but uh, amazing week, you know. Oh, uh, no complaints, man. You know, when everybody here, you you can't really find nothing to do besides just, you know, keep pushing and get challenged within the day, you know, uh, make it do what it do. Uh, but, you know, have a belated, man. But I, I got to ask you this question, though. Uh, three shows at ATL, man. So it seems like, you know, Jay Flake is getting on the road a lot, man. How how they go in that line before we get to our they went, they went really good. They, they went okay. really good. Um I seen some cats that be coming back up to Nashville while I was down there. And I ain't gonna lie, I used their name, you know what I'm saying, to get on a couple a couple of things. And they were like, oh, so who you know again? I gave them name. I'm like, I bet. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna put you on. 
Next time you come back, call me. Let me know you in the city, and I got you. Um, and another guy on the show I've been trying to get on. I actually actually was you know booked for that particular show. They was like, man, he really loved your stuff or whatever. Communicate with him. Possibly come back down there for another show at that at that particular venue um, when I come back. So you know, we we I'm become a road warrior. You know what I mean? I. I hit that road. I ain't get back to Nashville three thirty in the morning. You know what I'm saying? I, I did a turnaround on. Um, so yeah, it's time to hit that road, become a road warrior, and get his name uh, a little bit, you know, spread out a little bit farther, so I, I can kind of build up there to, you know, eventually tell my wife, hey, you ain't got to work. You can quit if you want to. Was up to you if you want to continue to work and you know get these and build that foundation for my children and my grandchildren. But the prayer will be. That 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 it goes so far that it touched the great grandchildren. You hear me? So, so we, so we trying to get there. We we grind and we hustle. Yeah, if they could just reach around and just touch them nephews and. <laughs> 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 hey, you know what I'm saying? You just reach around and touch them. Reach right around and touch them nephews and nieces, and nieces yeah. and grand nephews and nieces. Hey, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's hey, that's the big blessing, man. But that's what's up. I'm glad you're rocking it down there, man. Hey, hey, please believe the plan is the folks who close to me, hey, put them in position for a job. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. You put your that's two weeks notice in, you ain't got to work for them folks no more. You can come work for me. I got a spot for you to do X, Y, Z, whatever that is, and pay a reputable amount of money per year, per year where you will sell. Yeah, that's the plan. That's it. That's the goal, man. But yeah, it's definitely good that you're getting out the city because you know, like we talked about, you know, sometimes when you you may have, like you said on the last episode, you may have hit your ceiling in in your area, yeah. which is cool. But at least people are you hosting shows. You went from just trying to get on to something, open mic, to now people want you hosting shows in West Tennessee, East Tennessee, you know, Kentucky. So you kind of in your in the, in that area, you're pretty well known. But it, all it takes is just that one big big break in a big city. And then it's up from now. You know, people start calling in, like, who is this guy? I like, you know, but that's 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 the goal, man. That's that's what's up. But this you made an interesting point uh as we transition to our topic with your youngest daughter it was having a conversation with our, our grandmother. How did that go? And that could kind of really just transition into what we're gonna be talking about with uh Ron DeSantis down there in Florida, man. Yeah, it, it- I mean, it took her back. It took her back, and she got to telling me about the houses she worked with. One of the craziest things that she spoke about is that she used to work at a particular house, and if I tell you about it, I talk about this big white house in Miley that she used to work at and babysit kids that was older than she was. And I thought that was the wildest thing ever because you had a situation where, you know, she couldn't go through the front door. She could only go through the back door when working at this house during this time. And remind you, my grandma's 90 years old. So she she grew up during that whole little time. You know what I mean? Uh, our grandma was 90. I mean, I just put it like that. Um, and she was saying, like, I couldn't go through the front door. I go through the back door. But I'm babysitting your children. Why you got to do what you got to do that's older than me? I said, that's in, that, to me, that's in, that is crazy. You know, you don't you look at me as less than a human, but you trust me to watch your kids and a simple fact that you you know that I'm smart because I'm watching kids that's older than I am and making sure they not doing dumb stuff. It it just it just kind of blew me away because usually I'm thinking you babysitting kids as younger than little kids, four, five, six years old. She like, I'm going over there at 12, these kids 14, 15 years old, that I gotta make sure they not doing crazy stuff. So so in their mind. She's smart enough, she's responsible enough to watch my kids, but, I can't, but she can't come through my front door. She can't sit at our table. She can't sleep in, in our bed. You know what I mean? Like, it, it just it just hard me to wrap my mind around it, but those are stories that our kids need to hear. And it's not for, you know, teaching them to hate white people, but that's just history of what it was during those times, you know. Uh, my auntie was talking about, I'm one of the kids that, that first got segregated. It was only like two or three of us. And she was like, I hated every day of it because you took me from my friends to help segregate, uh, help, you know, uh, counsel segregation within our town. But I don't have any friends here. I don't have nobody to talk to. These white people looking at me crazy. 
I'm getting treated a little bit different, but after the day is over, I'm getting bused back to the other side of the town to see my friends. And she was like, I want to go to school with my friends. But I didn't want to, you know, I ain't really want to be there because I didn't have nobody to talk to. They wouldn't talk to me. They wouldn't, you know, I'm treated different. I'm looked at strange, this, that, and the other. Now, this is all in a small town that, that, that says our blood bleeds purple on Friday nights, but it wasn't that way during that time, and we still have some issues to this day. If you don't know, your granddaddy and your great uncle pictures is not up at the high school for their graduation. And the reason being, when they did segregation, they fought for, hold on, we are Gibson County Training Center, uh, Polk Clark High School, we want the buffalo. Y'all got the bull dog. Our colors over here is blue and yellow, or blue and gold, y'all purple and white. If we gonna come together, we, we, we can keep purple and white and be the buffaloes, or, or we can go blue and gold and be the bulldogs. Like, we want something attached to ourselves as we do this. But they weren't going for that. So they stood up for us so much that to this day, their graduation photos are not up there. When you go to our high school, you walk through them halls, you see everybody graduation photos from the set from the 50s to now. And when they graduate in the 70s, it's not there. Not there. Oh, I, I had seen something. I think they had removed that. And the term, the words that they used was due to safety or some little different little twist, because I'm pretty sure it was brought back up because in this time, everything's a little sensitive. But I think that's a, a righteous thing to be fighting is that the only reason why you're not putting our picture in there is because basically – you didn't want us to be a part of what you had right. going on. So that's just simple as that. That's not no reach. That's actual fact, right? Yeah. So, two people. Yeah, two people, <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's kind of obvious. Oh, okay, who's these brothers that's supposed to be right here? You see the names, maybe. Don't see the pictures. or You don't mention the names. So it's kind of obvious, right? Now, Ron DeSantis has now passed the bill. You said he is is, is going to be removing diversity, equity, and inclusion from – College all the way down to indoctrination. Indoctrination. Okay, so they, they start off with high school, and that, okay. and now they move into college, uh, okay. which is going to be state funded college. If you're a private college, they can't touch it. State funded colleges, the history we just talked about. Your kid go to college, they're not going. I mean, that all automatically got to go down to African American history, African American studies. You know, what I mean, any type of study. There's not like a rich cracker, basically just the same old, same old, same old. They they pretty much banning it, which is a shame. So in high school, I didn't like them doing that, but it was like, okay. But the kid go to college, they got the opportunity to study whatever they want to. But you taking that from state funded school, which one of them is FAMU, which my little sister went to. So how is that going to work for HBCU? You ban you banning all these books, you banning discussions of African American studies or whoever other studies that you want to go out and study. You ban it that they cannot learn, which is American history. And that's what it is. And like I said in the previous episode, if you're gonna ban that part of history, ban all of the history. Let's not talk about none of that. Let's not talk about your your first president, second president, third president. Let's not talk about nothing. Columbus better be taking the fuck up out of there. I bet not hear his name. Pilgrims bet not it bet not be a conversation about it. Yeah, and uh, you know, and I think that's why I said I think it tied in perfectly with the conversation that uh, little fan was having with, uh, with Granny. Is like one of the key parts is that the the newer generation or the younger kids, I would say, they are willing to question of what's always been known as just how it is. And I think the most important part is like people that think like Ron DeSantis is to implement things like this so that you don't have kids that are even inquisitive and wanting to know of what was the real past history of America because how it's deemed for people that don't know is for, and don't get me wrong, some black people and some minorities do take everything so sensitive and try to make it a race issue. So I'm not one of those people that race bait with everything. So let me just put that out there, but it is important to know the history. So 
what they want it to be is that we're only deemed as, okay, they're just trying to either trauma bond with each other. They have this victim uh, victimhood that they want to just put on. It's not truthfully that. People that want to know history of where we came from or how things were in America, because all of us weren't slaves. Some of our people were already here, Aboriginal people. Thanks. We, we yeah. understand that. But that's the crazy part about it is because to this day, a 10-year-old will be that inquisitive to want to know of what was going on in history and somebody that's a considered a leader would stop it because they understand that you can only push that narrative so long it may have been the millennials was the last cuss because outside of that we like hold on fam even a lot of us is like we didn't grow up in that and you can talk to an older person black and white and they will let you know of how prejudiced they were and you can talk to a white person that feels that they have privilege and they will show you how racist they are because of the things that they can implement. There's two different things between being ra uh, racist and somebody that's prejudiced. Black people are extremely prejudiced. There's some white people that are as well, but if they really know their power, they have race, they can inflict racism. And that's just really what's going on. But I just think that that's just a, especially somebody like FAMU, uh, any state funded is like, what's, what's really your point? I think is you scared of the truth for one, but two, the knowledge that you can give a 10-year-old that could be wanting to know, and just imagine how powerful they could be when they could start running for office and getting into it because they've got, I'm 31, they got 21 years that they could do this type of information and get involved. How much could they uncover and know and connect with other people when they've been taught this since uh, young, young, young? You know what I'm saying? Because I mean, that's, I mean, that's what they're scared of because you see seeing more politicians yep. that look like us, that is LGBT that is indigenous, that is Mexican, that is Colombian, that was born in this country, that is coming into politics to do better for their people. So when you got somebody like Ron DeSantis that is coming out basically saying, I am racist. I mean, he ain't saying it that he ain't saying those exact words, but the things he is pushing is I'm a white supremacist, I'm a racist. The crazy thing about it, I would expect somebody who's 60, 70, 80, 90 years old. This man is 44 years old. And he is pushing this type of agenda. Mm. But here's the thing. And when you see somebody like that, I know people, it's like, oh, okay, he's doing this. He attacks everything, everything. that is not him. If it's not a exactly. white man, if it's not, if it's not, if it's LG, I, you know, however you want to stand on the fence, whatever you do in your own sexual, that's that's your own thing. We're not going to necessarily get into that. But he attacks everything that's not of his walk of life with the same vengeance. And so, like I was, like we have discussed, but I think it's just more important to think about those things that are state funded and how we always fight for it. It goes back to our point that we had made on a few episodes. It's going to be kind of hard for you to try to go with a group of people to help you free yourself from what they want to consider, to consider or control the narrative. You're going to have to get away from that. So you think these privately owned institutions, they don't have to answer to what he's talking about. That's the goal. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's a lot of businesses. Prisons are, for one, privately owned. A lot of them that aren't state funded, they can do whatever they want to do. And so when you think about those type of things, it's based off of what the state ramifications and legal laws that they can do. It's a lot of harmful situations that could be created, but there's also a lot of positive that you can get from being privately owned and ran instead of looking for state funding. Because when you're dealing, yeah. if you land in bed with the state, you get whatever they got to deal with because they fund it as well. And that's just right. how it is. You're talking about 12 to 15 colleges and universities yep. uh, that these books that they had will be removed and there's some, and, and people don't look like this. Some professors will probably lose their job because that is the situation, that is the subject that they have their degree in, or that they that they are professionals in. Uh, like for instance, when we had the MTSU professor, he's an African American studies major and professor. He would probably lose his job if he can't switch over to say, "Oh, I'm going to teach economics," you know what I'm saying, or something like that. You know, that that's not what my degree is. My degree is being a professor and on top of that, being an African-American studies. That is what mm -hmm. I do. That's what I love. That's what I've been doing for the last 20, 25 years. And now all of a sudden, this guy want to change it. People, we got to vote for our local 
Y'all be swearing up and down that local elections ain't gonna be the y'all all be out there vote for president, but here it is a local governor making all type of changes within your school system. Mm -hmm. And the people are smart, every college football, basketball, tennis, golf, whatever sport recruiter, cheerleading would be like, oh, you think about going to school in Florida? Psh, I wouldn't do that. You can't learn everything you want to learn. You know what I mean? So that's the advantage to all those. I wish everybody that's close to Florida, Alabama, Georgia, the Carolinas, Tennessee, come out and say, okay, cool, Florida, you want to do that? Cool. We give y'all in-state tuition for anybody who's in Florida that want to learn about DEI instead of being in Florida and being capped on what you need to learn as you pay to go to school there. Because college is not free in Florida. You paying for this education and you can't learn what you want to learn as an elective class. Not in and I think you know, when you had mentioned this earlier in the group that we was going to discuss it, uh, that was my original thought is that, you know, within the, not to get it on sports, but within the NIL era that we're living in, that is going to sway a lot of people to stay away from that because they're going to deem Florida as a racist state, regardless of what history they may be known for, for what school, et cetera. Kids are going to look at that outside of the box because how they going, how it's going to be looked at is are you selling out by going down there to that Florida school? Because you can go somewhere and get the money anywhere. You don't have to go right. to a Florida school. So that's how it's going to start to look. It's like, okay, if they can't learn this, you can learn it on your own. But we thinking of it, okay, everybody wants to follow this system. If a state is willing to ban it and you're very prideful of it, say, for instance, you come from that walk of life and you wanted to know it, you're not going to Florida now. So that right. impacts all that. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're not going to do it. Miami, uh, Florida State, you name it. Fam, like you said, fam, you, they, they, what they going to do? You and know, and that, can, effect, that, can impact uh, sports. that can impact sports a lot. And when schools start to see that, they're going to be knocking on Ron DeSantis' door. Like, hey, 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 uh, come on, man. Like, we right. not, this ain't what we used to. Like, you, what you're trying to enforce is impacting our enrollment. We're not getting top athletes. They look at us as racist down here off of your behalf. That's and, how, and that's how it, outside of Miami, a lot of these cities in Florida don't make money and and unless it's the university or we talk about Miami or Tampa. The rest of them cities in Florida, they ain't got money like that if you remove University of Florida, FSU, FAMU. If you start removing Bethune Cookman, if you start removing them universities and colleges from those, like they losing money, the city lose money. Yeah, yeah, the state. In they, general, because I mean, gay they thrive yeah. off of college. Yeah, because like what Tallahassee just got Florida State, Gainesville they is just Tala Florida. They got but yeah, but Florida That's State it. mainly the money in Tallahassee. Yeah. I mean, they got FAMU there too, but the FAMU ain't bring much money as Florida State. Exactly. Yeah, but if you count all that out, look, say for instance, they really just said, you know what, well, bro, we ain't going on that thing at DEI. If they trying to uh, ban from having black people being able to express themselves and do what they want to do. Look how different from what we grew up watching Florida sports would be if they all said, nah, huh? I can't take right. that risk. I right. can't do that. You know, I don't know what this is going to look like for the next four or five years of my life. That's way and, different. And the, irony, and the irony of it is they banned this, but y'all got a lot of street names after indigenous people. Florida State mascot is a Seminole, which if you do your history, a Seminole is indigenous people and a black person as we got a friend that is his family is similar they are indigenous and black like the whole cinema tribe so that's the irony of all this craziness it's surrounded all around florida but you want to counsel this due to maybe we know how north florida get back so <laughs> north and me in florida i mean i Disney need to stand up and say something. If you ask me, but you know they, him and them and Disney going back and forth because right. you know he, yeah, you oh, know, so he, he attacking them. It's impacting their money. They right. had to, you know, get get rid of employees. There's a lot of different things because they 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 banning and trying to get banned. Like so, Ron DeSantis really just at war with anybody. Like I say, it's hard for you not to say that it's not a racist agenda when you could tell what he's standing for. There's right. no, you don't have to be for black people. You don't have to be for Latino ex people. None of that. But when you're directly 
targeting everybody outside of what you're comfortable with, you have some issues going on, bro. It's either that or some major insecurities. It's one of the two. Like, it's either racist or he, he, he's extremely insecure. And for y'all to think that this is a president that can run the country. I can tell you what. I'm talking about he running for president. You thought, yeah, can, if you thought 45 was bad. And, he, and you know what? He knew how to play the game. I'm not saying yeah. I'm not no Trumper, but he knew how to play the game. He was yeah, a businessman. He yeah, he's a businessman. He's a car salesman that you might want to see and check and see if it's a flood car, but that's on you to do your research. Ron, I'm sorry. I don't get nothing from him besides I'm just going to be extreme in whatever yeah. I do, and I'm going to stand on being whatever he – I don't even know if he's a white man, but whatever he rolling with – the last, name, gonna, though, the last yeah, name, though, really. The last name, though, yeah. really. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. He he might not know. Let me see what this man is. Hold on. I, I got to see. What is his nationality? He, he, might, he might spit in that tube and ship it off and come back. And uh, <laughs> he, he, he might come back. Hold on. Let me see. Oh, he's, he's, like, oh. <laughs> he's an Italian-American. So now it makes sense. He's yeah. an Italian-American. Yeah. But I don't. No, if he know, hey, he was an immigrant himself. Hey, it is what it is. But uh, uh immigrant hey, himself. His people was his, his own thing. Like I'm sitting here looking at it. The Sands is an Italian American. All of his great grandparents were born in Southern Italy and immigrated to the United States during the Italian dis come dysphoria. On. Hey, come on, hate them all you want to. You know, you hate immigrant. You know what I'm saying? That's why I tell people like research these people. You got to understand who lied in their pockets, dog. I mean, but but. It, but Italy is also the same place that Sic Sicily is next door, and they like, ah, we don't fool with y'all. They right next door. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, y'all a little bit dark, and not like it. Uh, yeah, 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 Sicilian people. Yeah, so you know, it's uh, you know, they said the same thing about Trump, and his wife couldn't even speak English. So, yeah, what I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, sometimes the world can be a show, but when you see stuff like this, it's actually impact the generations you gotta you know all bullshit aside put the jokes aside like this is these are real things that are impacting education this is stuff that we have to you have to learn these are things that you but once they force one thing you gotta understand of what else will they limit you know what i'm saying they only pushing the envelope so you gotta that that's the fear is that somebody at 44 years old has this type of impact mm -hmm. so if he even lives to be the old age of say a, a biden 30 years from now, and he still has this type of approach and he's did his, and he has a, a hold on people like Trump did, and he's still young, he's 50 and 60 still with this mantra, bro, that's dangerous. Yeah. That's Hell, dangerous. I, I even think 45 sports like, hey, he's taking it too damn far. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, 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 I joke to say, I get it Yeah, I feel like he was like, shit, I wasn't even going hard enough like this. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? Like he's on the phone, like nigga, nigga, straight. <laughs> like, man, but he bucking it, so he now he, you know, it's gonna be, you know, it's you know, it's all WWE. This. I can't tell black people to move from Florida, but what I can say is that black folks don't go, don't go vacation in Florida. And to that, then to his ass is out the office. Don't go to Florida. Yeah, I know I we want to go to Miami, and I know my aunt, but Miami is the only place that don't look like the rest of Florida. There's it, Miami the own, and Tampa. Some of Tampa. But outside Orlando, of that, Orlando hit and miss. But if you see a bunch of us in Orlando, you probably need to get up out of it. Because it's, it's real. <laughs> it ain't you, all you, Disney. It ain't all yeah, Disney. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, you got Disney World and then you got the real Jurassic Park. You don't want to be right. in the real Jurassic Park. Like, yeah, it gets it get spooky in Orlando, but. Yeah, they got Disney it. in California, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Go somewhere else. But uh, yeah, that's really about it, man. Is oh, yeah. yeah, Tampa, Miami, and that's just for the diversity. And, oh, and I know we love, this. but this is all diversity exclusion. So don't yeah, black yeah. folks if you can't. If you ain't already yeah. bought your tickets and sit, don't go to Florida for vacation. I can't tell y'all to move out of Florida, but don't go to Florida for vacation. Y'all new recruits don't go no Florida University. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure it's a, a TSU that wants you. Uh, Georgia, if you think about FSU, it's a Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Kentucky. But shit, damn. Some of them ain't no better, but they ain't. They ain't passing this law. 
Let me just say that. They ain't taking it that damn far. Yeah, yeah. Just go where you feel comfortable, man. That's a, Go where you want it. Because yeah. it seems like Florida, you ain't for damn sure want yeah, they, they, Yeah, they try their best. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah that's, that's, that's crazy, man. But, uh... Any closing, any closing thoughts on that before we get to our next one and before we wrap it up? Florida governor, boy, he a bitch. Yeah. Florida doing Florida shit. Florida been yeah. like this for a long time, y'all. He just put oh, it out there. Before. Yeah. Florida been like this. If you ever traveled through Florida driving and went through North Florida, that, yeah, you know what the deal is. Yeah, they stopped you, at a gas station? Shit. Yeah. 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 <laughs> to be honest with you, you only really just used to see the little clips Florida man, but now that you see a governor that's so loud and proud with what he's trying to push, but once you vacate down there, you if you ain't in like no little military town or college town, you see real Florida. And them uh, boys, that's them 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 yeah, them them uh them pepper wood, they they different. You're gonna have to match their energy because they ain't seeing us. They'll tell you at a gas station like, oh you you ain't from here, are you? Know we? Yeah, this is the last time I stopped here. You know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, yeah, it's cool. So I guess, What's that? Yeah, that question. Yeah. You ain't from right here, are you? Right. Right. You know, be back. Yeah, okay. hey. I don't even. I don't even need no gas. I think I got a couple yeah. more. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Real talk, man. Right? Real talk. Yeah, I used to go home. About, about 50 miles empty. Yeah, I think I can. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. That's cool. Right. I push it. I push it. Yeah, I push it. <laughs> but uh. Yeah, for real, because it's like some sp spots in North Florida before you get into Georgia, man. It's they still got plantation roads and plantation signs. Like it's real. I used to call mama every time I got to that spot before I crossed over. Right before you get into Valdosta, you probably just seen it coming down. Yeah, I'm saying you see big plantation right there. They'll tell you, don't stop at that gas station. It's plantation right behind it. What you think you're gonna see when you go into stuff. Right. Yeah, like they sell up pecans and apple pies, you know. That's just yeah, white only pies. So <laughs> that ain't for everybody. Real talk. You feel me? Like, How much it costs? Who turned the white only pies? The nigga man, pies. Listen, I'm, I'm just trying to get to see my family, man. You know, I'm just trying to get on home. Yeah, you got to know for real, man. But on a serious note, man, I think DeSantis, uh, DeSantis really, for him to be from where he's from and to be taking that route, it's just, it shows you that people get so out of touch when politics are involved, and that's why we discuss it. I know people hate to talk about it, but I think it's needed within our communities because we kind of find ourselves in outrage about things that were already set in place. So if you just knew where you was and you seen where it happened, at, it's unfortunate, but you can almost think of what, who's going to have the advantage when you see said situation on TV. You know what's yeah. going to go on. You just got to know how to, how to uh, be proactive instead of reactive. That's why we talk about these type of issues because it's real. So don't go to Florida complaining about they don't have it. You knew that before you got there. So what's going to be your plan yeah. to get it in front of you and the people that you feel like is needed? That's that's the goal for that whole conversation. But we're getting to something that's a little bit more. Oh, uh, yeah, it, it ain't it ain't too much better. It ain't too yeah. much better. Oh. Uh, Boy, I tell you what. Oh, uh, because his next subject they calling this person a hero. Hero, yeah. And has a been able to uh, get a, a, I think a, a million dollars in donations for yeah, the defense yeah. he team. Did, he was at twenty eight hundred before we started this episode. He might be at three million right now. Yeah. So uh, Jordan Neely. Jordan Neely. Let me put this out here. Since everybody wants to say that the person who killed him is, you know, he's a Marine and this and other. Let me tell you all about Jordan Neely. Jordan Neely was a Michael Jackson impersonator. Jordan Neely was a 30-year-old man. Jordan Neely performed at Times Square as a Michael Jackson impersonator. Many people have seen him perform as a Michael Jackson impersonator, and he's got plenty of tips, and he was damn good at doing it. Let's just put that out there because not many people is talking about that part. They talk about the person who killed him and try to make him look well. Jordan Neely was a man out here that was homeless, struggling on the streets and trying to make it and doing his gift as being as a Michael Jackson impersonator and make his money. He was going through a little mental health issue, which some people go through. He did not harm anybody. 
He did not put his hands on anybody. He was complaining and having a, what I would like to call a breakdown. Have you ever seen somebody go through a breakdown? It is not meant for that person to be killed or to die. It is a temporary situation that they might be going through for the next 30 minutes, an hour, or whatever it is, until they can get over that situation they're going through. We all go through depression. And when you have all the things, life, you know, he's dealt a bad hand, possibly. I don't know his personal information, but it seems like he might have been dealt a bad hand. And he was going through a little bit of breakdown as being a person that was hungry and didn't have any money at that particular time. If you've been to New York, and I've been there, and I've ridden the subway a few times, you will see certain things, and you just ignore it. They're not harming me, and you keep it moving. If you've been to L.A., you have seen certain things out on the beach, I walk on the streets of L.A., people talking to themselves, people yelling, homeless, they didn't make it, built a bad hand. I'm not saying them only two cities, but those are the two cities where I've witnessed the breakdowns get off in Chicago. I've seen the breakdowns like that with people who've been homeless, dealt a bad hand and going through it, might be battling depression, and you see them, you either give them a couple of dollars, tell them have a blessed day, or you just keep moving. This man, this um, Penny, decided to take matters to his own hands and choke this man out to his death. Did I watch the whole video? Nope. Uh, I seen the beginning of it, but it's just something about me now, today, where I'm just not finna watch a man lose his last seconds of his life through the damn phone. I'm just not finna do it. I watched the beginning, so I come over here and talk, but I also do my research and, and I will read about all what happened. From my understanding, like I said, he didn't harm anybody. He wasn't cussing anybody. He hadn't put his hands on anybody. He didn't have a weapon. Um, and a couple of people held him down while this happened. I wish somebody would have kicked Penny in his face and told him to let him go. Especially, I mean, when you do put somebody in a chokehold, before you pass, before you pass away and die, there is a point where you don't get oxygen and you just pass out. So keep that in mind as well. So there was a point where you have to keep holding him where he is no longer moving to kill this person because your brain will go in protect mode and just your body would just stop and your brain would be like, all right, we got to get these lungs. We're going to stop everything else to get these lungs going. So he had turned himself in. He's been charged with manslaughter, which to me should be second degree murder. Manslaughter carries up to 25 years, but as we know, we've seen in the past, when somebody get manslaughter, I don't think I've ever seen anybody get 25 years unless they were uh, drunk driving, unless it was vehicular manslaughter. Outside of that, I don't think I've got seen 25 years. I got a homeboy uh, from Ohio. His dad shot somebody, got his manslaughter. He did seven. So I'm, I'm just... Just put it out there. But I want to bring you to the podcast. Get you guys thought on this. Uh, maybe you guys seen some other stuff that I wasn't able to research and see and uh, give your thoughts on them. Him, him, him turning himself, first of all, he, he got questioned and sent home. And then they came back and, and put it out there that, you know, he needed to come in. He came in and got this manslaughter charge. And, and I think he's out on bond. And uh, $28 million to his defense fund. It's damn disheartening and sick, bro. It's damn disheartening and sick. That that lets you know what type of that lets you know what type of country we live in. I I know America is one of the free countries, and, and America has a lot of good, but sometimes we got to face the bad on, on where we live. At. And twenty eight million, and the whole story hasn't even came out of what happened. It is sick and disheartening. Yeah, I mean, uh, 2.8 million, my bad. 2.8, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, rest in peace, uh, rise of power to Jordan Neely, man. Uh, not uh, Jordan Neely. Um, yeah, Jordan Neely. Jordan Neely. Jordan uh, Neely. Yeah, the the what kind of got me, I, I definitely quit watching the videos. Uh, I don't even watch that mess no more. It, it really... It I don't, I don't want spirit, that to... Because most yeah, time I get that in the morning. And like that's not should be that ain't the way that you start your day. That ain't how you start your day off, yeah, man. But 
the unfortunate part about it, it really connected me to the story because I was just looking, you know, I looking at stuff a little, look, sometimes probably a little different from other people. But the brother was going through something, and of course, he was down on hard times. But as the story continued to progress and they released more stuff, uh, family had said and uh, a friends said that he had really started to lose it as of recent because he lost his mother. And that's a different feeling if you've never been through that. You know what I'm saying? Like that, that's, that's, yeah, that, you you wouldn't wish that on your worst enemy. I, I promise you, once you've been through it, you wouldn't wish that on your worst enemy. So when I heard that part of it and just seen it and seen that he was questioned and sent home and to his public outrage and people getting arrested out there for protesting uh, to fight for him. And it's just like, man, like, where are we at in the country to consider this, you know, this guy a, a hero for killing a man that was having a manic episode? Like, I don't give a damn what color you are. Like, if it was opposite, okay, neutralize the situation, right. pin him down, cool, you done with it. But holding his hands and people still holding him, man, lifeless. You pass out in about 10, 15 seconds, like at the most. So I don't even know, I don't even want to know how long he held him. Like, cause it, you know, I, I got enough of that with the George Floyd situation, but it's like people are just heartless out here, man. Like, and we have and the the lack of respect that we have for one another is at the all time high. And it just matches the ignorance that's outside. So it's just important that like situations like these that happen, you always tell people, you know. People record it, but who's going to intervene? Who's going to be the guy or woman that says, hey, hold on, bro. That's, I mean, you know, he he done. You defuse the situation. But the fact that somebody could be yelling and cussing and threatening people but ain't made a move or nothing, just probably just in his own little zone, like you said, if you've been in a big city or anywhere, you just seen somebody going through something and you just like, I mean, just let them do what they do. But not at any point that I ever think about hopping out of car and we, we didn't been places together. We yeah. five, six, seven deep. Mm-hmm. We not putting our hands. What we gonna do to you, buddy? Like we know what we gonna do to you. It ain't nothing. You if you touch us, then now at that point, cool. But you talking, man. Listen, bro. Get it off your chest. Get it off your chest. You know it's better off than on. But man, I can't. It, 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 and anything less than murder was I when I seen the man slide. I said, "Here come the Okie Doke again. Come the Okie Doke. Yeah. That's it." You know, come on, you know, it's, it's it's just ignorance everywhere you go, man. And then you wonder why people, everybody's on the defense. This is it. This is America mm-hmm. in a nutshell. You can get questioned for killing somebody and go home and get celebrated as a hero for killing somebody that has a mental health issue. And here go the thing, and I, I'm going to close it out on this. May is Mental Health Month, and he is still right. getting glorified as a hero by congressmen and senators of states that are leaders, quote unquote. I'll leave it at that, man. That just let you know what America is in a nutshell. He's a hero for killing somebody with mental health issues during mental health month. That's a weak ass shit. You gonna kill somebody with mental health issues? Nah. You come out, if you, if you want to be superhero and use your marine tactics so good, you sign up for the UFC. And you let John Bones Jones get on your ass. Yeah. Let's see how well. <laughs> Let's see how well it's up to stand up to that part. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. I couldn't ever imagine myself if I see somebody who's going through a mental issue and putting may like I said, restraining them, tackling them, put them down. I'm like, hey, bro, you have to calm down. I know you're going through it, bro, but you got to calm down and maybe even get the police involved. I ain't in the streets. I call the police and, and maybe getting some some type of help. But one thing that did come out of New York City, and some of the New Yorkers was like, you know how New York do. If it ain't got nothing to do with us, you know, we kind of keep it moving. But y'all seen a man get choked out. I don't give a damn how New Yorkers do. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, y'all Two people held him down. So where are the charges for them two people? Because y'all insisted in it. Oh, and I don't care what color you is. I don't care what race you are, what color you is. If you assisted in it, bro, you need to be in court too. Some need to happen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't see any difference. I don't see I don't no see difference. No yeah, I mean, he held his neck, 
but you are also restricted him as well from being able to move freely. One person is right. holding his hands. There's another individual that you could kind of barely see that said like his feet. So he couldn't move. Right. Like he was completely restrained. So I don't know what the whole outlet was, but yeah, those two other individuals, they definitely need to be held accountable for the same actions. They aided in him being deceased at this at, as we speak. Simple right. as that. And if you if you go in the case with George Ford and the other police officers that was watching didn't do nothing Simple to charge, I don't see Simple. how these other people can't get charged. Get, gotta be accomplished. Gotta be because I can't I can't if somebody choking me out, I can definitely my legs strong enough. Well, I can <laughs> squat you up. I can squat you up and bang you up against the wall because when you go in the subway, them is brick, uh get them a marble wall while you concrete walls where if you want to bounce somebody up against the walls and get them up off of your hook. I could be able to do that. But if y'all hold me down, I can't even do that. Exactly. Exactly. And New York needs to look into having some type of security. Because I've been on them subways, and you got one person to help you with directions. Outside of that, bro, I ain't seen no police officer, no security, no nothing. You just kind of like everybody out there on their own. Once you, once you, once you stand there waiting on the next subway trying to come through. Yeah, that's so what they I they might want to invest. I mean, just the presence alone. I ain't saying you gotta have 30 people that just about two people presence is enough for somebody, hey, bro, like hey, he over there having an issue. Can y'all watch him or whatever? Or this person will be choking this person out and be like, nah, nah, let him go. We got it from here. Or, or something. Mm -hmm. They can True. do it. Before this happened, I thought about that when I went down there because you hear all the stories about stuff happening on the subways of New York, subway in Chicago. Marta in Atlanta, any of these type of transit systems where you got a whole bunch of people all together, like stuff happens, and one or two security guards, I ain't saying they got to be superhero, this, that, another, but a lot of times when you see somebody, they can help defuse the situation just by a presence being shown. Yep. Yeah. That's how it go, man. It's, uh, like I said, just stay vigilant out here, man. Uh, hate to say it, but you know, you just, you know, you can't trust nothing, really. You just got to be on your own square and stay vigilant, man. That's really, that's it. That's 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 the times we living in, you know. It's kind of, I used to, I always used to ask my grandmama back in the day, like, what she meant by we living in the last days. You know, that's just, if you're from, especially if you're from the South, you done heard that <laughs> saying a thousand times. You feel me? Plenty of times. Plenty of times, but it's like. It just feels like people just don't have no care for the world no more, you know. And but maybe it's always been this way. And since we have so much accessibility to media and news, it, we feel it a little different. But it's just the temperament is different, man. It's a lot of different things that impact, man. So you know, for everybody that listens and, and taps in, man, we we really appreciate it. But for for y'all to do it, man, I just hope that we all approach it with a being proactive uh from a logical perspective and remove the emotions as much as possible. I know we're human, we're not robots, but we have to step outside every day and be 10 steps ahead of everything else that we could be faced with. That's just right. that's just what it is. We don't have time to be just party, party, party. And by party I mean just being distracted by everything that's around us and just caught up in the matrix. Uh we we you know if you listen to us, please take some of this stuff and implementing it to your daily. We're not perfect. We're just talking about things that, you know, either we've done or seen or trying to perfect ourselves. But some of this, some of these things that we are going through and being able to experience it, you got to know how to operate. You know, a lot of these situations we've talked about, we've, we've been in like North, right. you know, North Florida, going back to that, we've been around having to straight some people that look at us like we are less today, but they didn't look at it after we walked away from the situation. But that's right. just things you got to deal with, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, yeah, my, my 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 thoughts and prayers goes out to uh, Mr. Neely, man. And uh, I hope that, that family, uh, and the sad part about it, a little bit that he still has, but he probably had more impact on the people that seen him on that train or in that area and, and, and imitate Michael Jackson. But I hope that they do get justice in that. But, you know, it ain't, it don't take much to just – Love on somebody that's around you, no matter what the color is, man. It, and get them damn phones you know, out y'all hands and start intervening on some of these situations too. Like man. especially our black men, I didn't see a lot of y'all recording women fighting and 
it's just women like all that stuff. I understand mind your business, but at some point we got to get back to some kind of code. Like we ain't doing all the fighting and all that, man. You, we got to be focused. This. Don't mind your business and record. If you don't mind your business, you get your car and leave. Exactly. Don't mind your exactly. business before you fall. Boom. That's it. That, what, they, what they be with the young, young girl be saying, that's this the one. Yeah, this the one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This the one right here. Yeah. Really mind yeah. your business. You going to call the police, get in your car and leave. Like, they over here fighting. Down. If you ain't about this street life, that's what you're going to do. That's what I'm going to do. That ain't yeah, what I'm about. I'm going to call them. Yeah. Hey, they over here acting up again. I'm gone. <laughs> hey, here, here, here go the real point, especially if I know for a fact they're around some people that I may know of, and I right. know how they about to get down. Right. Holla at y'all, fam. Y'all get it? Holla at y'all. Yeah, I know what they it. about to get on. Yeah, if I don't think it's going to be that. I might intervene and be like, hey, man, y'all ain't got yeah, to do that. You know these folks yeah. gonna call the police, this and the other man. Y'all yeah, think this don't real, go, da, da, da. Yeah, don't go to jail for nothing. But if I right. know who I know, and ain't no calming them down, yeah, I'm gone, fam. Where, my, where my keys see? at? Where yeah. my keys at? Won't eat, matter of fact, won't even know I was there. So that if that's <laughs> what y'all want to play with, y'all stay on that side of the fence. Like over here, we just we move with a certain type of, of morals yeah. and ethics. That's how you plan. Let me get my I'm key. Let me go on, get up out of here. I know what y'all. And, and I know I said call the police. I might even call the police. I know what I'm, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna leave. I'm yeah. just gonna leave. You ain't gonna know. I'm, I'm, I'm out of there though. You better yeah, leave yeah, that. Yeah, ain't no, ain't fam. Y'all see? No, 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 no. We getting up out of there. Yeah. I was, yeah, I was yeah. in the club three weeks ago. Yeah. And I seen some stuff going down in the back. And they said, "Oh man, we need y'all to sit down, man. Y'all done broke something." And they arguing back with them about. Don't you worry about it. I know it's about to go. Hey, fam, the gone go. Time to go, bro. Yeah, real time. And, 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 and believe me, the, the older I get, the more I realize. And the next day, they was like, you know, the boy got to fight up there, dude. Yeah, I knew it was coming. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm out of there. Yeah, especially depending on the, uh, the demographic. Because, you know, maybe our age, we might get a little tussle in. Anybody that's younger than me, I'm definitely going because oh, yeah. they they ain't doing number sparking. They ain't they doing was. nothing else. Yeah, they gonna shoot 20. the whole club, bro. Yeah, Bur Burley, they shoot the club. From twenty one to twenty four, yeah, I'm shooting. gone. Yeah, they shoot. Yeah, they shoot. They ain't doing no arguing. All uh, you gonna know is it sparks. Nah, I'm straight, fam. But yeah, oh uh, yeah, that's we'll close it with that, man. Uh, Stay vigilant, my people. That's it, man. You know. No spring black person this week. Next week we'll come back with one. Yeah. Uh, but I do want to give a shout out to my city. And I'm going to tag the post. I'm probably going to share it because I shared it today. But they got the, uh, what is it? Hold on. Let me just make sure I pull it up the right way. And why And why are you doing it? I just thought about my spring black person. I said it wasn't yeah. one, but I'm switching yeah, up. That's it. Now we so, did one on Uncle Nearest Green and who he was. Now we gotta talk about the person who brought the brand back, and that's Fawn Weaver. Fawn Weaver and her husband brought the Uncle Nearest brand back. And the reason why she is our spring black person we two reasons. One, for bringing that black on whiskey to Tennessee, where it's originally created and made. Uh also, she and her team is the number one black land owner in Tennessee. They own so many acres around Lynchburg, Shelbyville, Nashville, Murfreesboro area. They have become the largest landowner in Tennessee. So shout out to uh, the Fawn Weaver team, the whole team on Canaries. They are doing their thing. They are expanding on Canaries brand. They are expanding the distillery. Now they own, they have the largest bar. The longest bar or the largest bar in the United States? I want to say it's the longest one. Uh, Humble Baron down there in Shelbyville, Tennessee. So shout out to that team. Uh, Miss Fawn Weaver, you are a supremely black queen. We thank you very much. You are a supreme black person of the week. Yeah, definitely shout out to Miss Weaver now. I, mean, I, I think that's that's dope, especially with that land, man. And I don't know who the original, uh, who, who put this together, man, but I'm going to put it in our group. I'm gonna put it on the on the uh the episode so you can see exactly what it is. But in uh my hometown, they are having a first annual community field day. They're gonna have cake walks, potato sack rays, balloon toss, horseshoes, beanbag toss, tug of war, uh, uh water kickball, face paint, frisbee toss, four-legged race, jumpers, 
all that, man. And so it seems as if that Miss Denicia Frame uh, from the city. Uh, oh, okay. Her, but yeah, but it looks like they got this organized and it's going to be on uh, 108 Ellis Street. And, you know, if you're from Miley, you know, Ellis is very prominent. You know about right? Ellis? Yeah, yeah. So they're going to have vendors and everything like that. So, man, major shout out to you. You know, I think stuff like this going on in any community is, uh, is, is dope. But especially since me and Flake happen to be from, you know, small town USA, Milan, Tennessee, I think this is this is a turn. This is a turn for better, man. You know, especially in the city that they consider no love city, man. The right. city they doing a community day and a field day for the kids and the community that's major. It's gonna be on May twentieth, uh, from ten a.m. to three p.m., man. So you know, if you're in the area in the surrounding area, you know, pop out and mile, man, and you know, show some love, bring your kids out. It's gonna be a lot of fun for them. So, you know, we love to see that. So that's our. Yeah, I know you said the Supreme Bay person, but I did want to give that person a shout out to Denicia Frame and anybody else that's a part of organizing the community event in Milo, man. That's that's dope, and I salute y'all. Yeah, this be the novel. Black folks, we gotta stop saying first A. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't A to the second one. This be the novel. Yeah, 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 yeah. See the fly first A will cost you, yeah, bro. Yeah. This Hey, but you know, I think they, you know, people use that like Versa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no such thing, right? Versa and, and Mines. Who yeah, I can stand yeah. Mines. You know, yeah. Mines, man, it ain't yeah, got no but, S on it. Ain't no <laughs> S on that, man. It's yours. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, we go. We got to close this joint out, man. All right, bro. For all our queens out there, put your crown on, tip that thing to the side, let them know. Uh, you are a queen. Follow like kings out there. Put your crown on. Tip that thing to the side and let them know you are a king. But we are supremely black, and we out.